Okay, time for latest AI updates. Four things today. Uh, one, wait lists. Two, plugins. Three, your job is not okay. And four, GPT-4. First of all, wait lists. I've signed up for so many wait lists the last few weeks for AI tools that I've created a website called uh, waitlist.com where you can sign up for all the wait lists. Um, unfortunately, we've been so busy, we had to create a wait list for our website. Uh, not really, don't sign up there. But I did sign up today for um, GPT plugin, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second, for Bard, which is Google's latest, um, which is Google's chat GPT, which they just released this week. And all kinds of other stuff. There's stuff coming out daily all over the place. It's uh, it's come pretty wild out there. So um, main thing today, I want to talk about plugins. So uh, OpenAI came out with uh, GPT plugins today. So this is ChatGPT, the main AI everyone's talking about. And plugins, if you think about how, if you know how Salesforce works, so you've got the main Salesforce core app, the CRM. And then they make it available to other companies to come and build plugins on top. So to come and build tools on top of it. Same thing. Um, OpenAI has now, AI has now done this. So their large language model, their language creator model is their core. And they're allowing other companies to come in and create plugins. So I can now use the large language model for the language and maybe use an ESPN plugin for the latest sports results, that kind of thing. I've said before, I think... OpenAI don't care about updating the model. Everyone complains it hasn't been updated since 21, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's important. It's important that it speaks great English and then it has this base of knowledge and then these plugins fill the gaps. Um, so one of the, probably the, actually the worst example I saw today, it was a good example, but a terrible example, was the Expedia one. Terrible because it was just weak. And because they used the exact same demo as they used in 2016 for their Alexa app. Um, it wasn't the same demo, but it may as well have been. It was the same process. So you run ChatGPT messing around. You then say to ChatGPT, I want to book a flight to Puerto Vallarta. And GPT recognizes, I don't know how it does this, but it recognizes, I think it's a keyword that's contained in the plugin. That, oh, we don't have access to that. We'll go to the Expedia plugin for that. It pings Expedia, Expedia come back. So, yeah, we've got a flight leaving at 10 a.m. You then chat and say, great. And can you also send me some hotel recommendations? And it sends you back a list of five. It's just weak because if you want to do that, you just go to Expedia.com. It's a far better experience. It's got flight comparisons and it's built for that. So they were just trying to hack a demo into a chat experience, which it shouldn't have been. It could do far more ex far more advanced things than that. But hey, it's day one. I'll give them a break. Um, they're making an effort. But this is important going forward. This fact layer is, I think, where we're going to go with this. So we've got the large language model and all the layers on top. Now you'll be able to choose your plugins. So I'll be able to choose ESPN for my sports and BBC for my news and Expedia for my travel and whatever else I want. So I'll have the large language model and this layer on top which kind of fills in the gaps. That's interesting because we then create our own AI and actually the CTO of OpenAI, she talks about this is the way things may go. We may each have a custom version of AI, not a, not a, not a travel assist, not, a, not an assistant, but an actual large language model because we've each got our own plugins. Bit disturbing because we each get to choose our own news source and, um, and OpenAI may choose some new sources for us as well. So it's interesting to see where that goes. In some ways, this is not new. This is just a UX. You could already do this yesterday uh, on an embedding layer. So you create this fact layer on top and you could already access this and create apps built on this. But this is creating a, just a, a UX to access all these data layers. And as we know from ChatGPT, data layers are important. That's how these things grow. Um, one of the one of the plugins is going to be Bing, which is weird because now you can search Bing from ChatGPT. I think we already know that you can search ChatGPT from Bing or a version of it. So it's weird they're sort of coming together a little bit, and ChatGPT potentially is becoming less of a pure language model and more of a search engine, which is interesting. Um, 
I don't know if it's going to be a better experience. Uh, I think Google are going to be extremely worried about this um, and hoping that Microsoft OpenAI make a misstep. But it's interesting. I think this is where this stuff goes. I think it's important for company information as well. So companies will just have a plugin instead of this embedding layer. So now I can search the large language and my company information privately. Or you can make that public if you want. And I think that's where all this extra information comes from. So each vertical will have all these fact layers that you can now search and make available to, for other people to search. That seems like where it's going. Uh, for OpenAI, it's great because everyone's using the large language model. Every time you search, you have to ping their large language model and pay them, which is really nice for them. Um, so that's an important update. It'd be interesting to see where that goes. Number three, your job is not okay. I think I mention this every time. People are still fighting this stuff. Oh, it can't write good English, and it it, it makes up th it makes things up, and it, it does make things up. Um, but it does write good English. It's better at English and at language than we are. I think people just need to recognize that. I guess we fought when calculators came out, and we claimed they couldn't do maths as well as us, and. We gave that, that fight. We used to claim we were better at chess. We gave up that fight. We, we elevate ourselves as humans. We like to think that we're better at all of these tasks, like like driving and, and language, just because we made up the language. But we're not better at language today than computers. It's just the way it is. And I think we need to recognize that. Yeah, I, I talked about this before, but it doesn't sound very interesting. But I think it's interesting. You could be the judge. But data compression... It's an awful start to a point, but think about what you do all day in your workplace. Maybe that's your home, but what you think about and what you do, you 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 absorb data all day from, from Slack, from Zoom, from conversations with people, from reading articles, from socials. We're absorbing data. We're taking in this data. And then we compress that data. We're really good at this. We compress that data and hand it off to other humans. So then in the next meeting, we get all this information we've learned in the last few meetings in the last few years, and we hand it off to the next person to make another decision to the next thing. And they hand it off to the next people. And we're all just doing the same gathering of data and passing it off. We're all pretending like it's brand new data and giving it to the next person. And it goes down the line until it ends up usually on a computer as a memo or an email or on a website or a chat bar, and eventually it ends in the hands of a consumer or a decision maker, and they make a decision based on some big marketing campaign. But it's all information flowing around to affect someone's decision 10 layers down. All that is, is data compression. We're just taking some data and moving it and compressing it and moving it, and that's not very efficient. And computers are better at doing that than us today and we're not very good at doing that. We're just passing the same information round and round and round. We all like to pretend that we're geniuses and making all this stuff up, but it's mostly the same recycled data. So computers are gonna take over that space and that includes most of us. So our jobs are not okay. I don't know what we're gonna do. I think we'll find more jobs. We were already short of humans which is great because we need we need to become more efficient. This will make us more efficient, but it's going to make everyone 10 times more efficient, 100 times more efficient. And everyone likes to tell the great story about this is going to enhance you and this is going to make us all better. It can't make us all 10 times better. There's not enough work to be done. So this has an effect. I don't know how. Nobody knows how. But I think we need to be realistic with ourselves and see what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. People are coming onto this slowly, some people quickly, some people slowly, but it's happening around us and it's not gonna stop. Um, a lot of humans are still fighting it. Um, some for good reason, but I think it's good to face facts of what is gonna happen. Not that I know, but things are gonna happen. Lastly, I'm just gonna cover GPT-4 quickly. It's I think it's not the most important thing. It came out last week. It is a big step up. I think it passed the bar exam in 90th percentile, so better than 9 out of 10 lawyers. Um, and most other exams, the same. It's much better at calculating certain things. It's not faster. Um, it's more accurate, makes up less things. Unfortunately, this thing still does hallucinate, which is where you make up facts. And they don't have a solution for this. Like, it's getting better, but they don't have a solution. I've said before, it makes up word by word where it's got lots of information, 
top 50 things to do in San Francisco, it's going to be great. If I ask for top 50 things to do in Sunderland, it's going to make up 49 of those things. Confidently, that's the problem. You don't know when it's making it up. But it's getting better at that. It's getting really good at some tasks. Last thing on, G on GPT-4 is it now does um, image to text, which is not widely released yet, but that's going to be really important. It's not a ton different to text to image. It's the same process. The way they trained text to image is we've got bouncing backwards and forwards between text and images a few trillion times and that's how it learned how to draw how to create images same in reverse it, it can now read an image and create back to text which you could convert to code and create websites and apps and that kind of thing so that's going to be really interesting i'll cover that more in the future when i've played with it um that's all i got for now thanks for listening bye